20 years ago, the aspirational vehicle of choice was a convertible sports car. If you had one of these in your driveway, people knew that you had made it in your career field. Now, in today's world, roadsters are dying because everybody seems to want an SUV, which is why BMW killed off their iconic Z4 back in 2016. Well, today I'm at their Spartanburg, South Carolina assembly plant with the all new 2020 Z4 M40i. It rides on a new platform. It has a 382 horsepower turbocharged straight six under the hood, and its design looks nearly identical to the concept car they showed a couple of years ago. So the big question I want to answer, if you guys are looking for an aspirational vehicle and you don't want an SUV, how does the all new Z4 M40i stack up? That's what we're here to find out. So I know everybody is so obsessed with SUVs nowadays, but how can you not look at something like this and make your knees go weak? Because this thing is really beautiful looking. In fact, in this Misano blue exterior color, I think this is one of the most attractive looking new sports cars you can buy today. It just has a very low, very wide uh, stance. It also has this very long hood to accommodate that straight six cylinder engine. Now looking at the front fascia of the Z4 M40i, I really like the details that you've got here. Of course, you've got the signature BMW twin kidney design with the dark satin silver finish that you get with the M40i models. You have a slightly unique finish inside the grille to give it kind of more of a mesh effect. Uh, these are BMW's full LED headlights, which are adaptive. You have LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals. Their signature laser headlights are not available on the Z4, which is an interesting omission. I imagine they may do that or may add that whenever they decide to refresh the car. I like a lot of the lower parts of the front fascia. You have these functional air vents, no fog lights. Instead, you just have more air vents and then you have these well-integrated uh, parking sensors. But overall, you'll have to let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the design of the Z4. It definitely has a presence to it. It looks like a much more expensive car versus the previous generation. And I think that it really is going to look uh, good. Now, looking at the rest of the proportions, I wanna first talk about the wheels. Now, this one here is kind of a 19 inch option that you get with the grace uh, finish. BMW also offers kind of like a jet black look. You also have these M Sport specific brakes. These are 13.7 inch rotors, four piston uh, calipers. So high performance brakes with the blue caliper, which look fantastic. The wheels them themselves are also staggered, uh, 225s in the front and then 255s in the back. Remember, this is a rear drive only car. Now when you step, or when I step back a bit and look at the rest of this car's proportions, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. First of all, this is not based on the new cluster product architecture. It shares it with the Toyota Supra. It's wheelbase at 97.4 inches long, it is uh, about what you expect. This is about the same size as something like a Porsche Boxster or a Cayman. Its overall length at 170.4 inches long is actually two inches shorter than the Toyota Supra, but it's about the same length again as the Porsche 718 Boxster, which this car is the main competitor uh, for that vehicle. Now at the back, I also like the design proportions here. I mean, again, uh, there are just simple clean lines which make it look like a bigger, wider car. It looks very elegant and classy. Uh, this M40i model has a slightly unique rear bumper fascia. And then of course the twin outlet exhaust, which look like they're actually connected to the muffler. I'll let you guys hear what that engine sounds like. <laughs> In typical BMW fashion, the engine is smooth, it likes to rev, and it sounds damn good, especially with those crackles and the pops. Now, this is a convertible, so you still have to see what the trunk capacity is like. Now, the Z4's trunk, when you first look at it, it looks kind of small. I mean, convertibles are not practical. That's why people aren't really buying them as much, but you get just under 10 cubic feet of space um, when you open up the trunk. The opening is actually bigger than I expected it to be. This is about double the size of something like a Mazda Miata, but it's about half the size is what you're gonna get in a Cayman or a Boxster because there is no frunk like you get in the Porsche. So overall, the trunk is usable, but just know that um, some competitors offer a little bit more trunk space. So convertibles are always beautiful to look at from the outside, but let me first show you guys what it's like on the interior. The first thing I do want to show you, the new power soft top. To put it down, it's very simple. There's a button on the dash. You just push this button down, kind of like a power window switch. It takes about 
12 seconds to put the top down. As you can see, it's a very quick top. I like the fact that BMW has gone back to a soft top. The previous generation had a power retractable hard top. I think it works a little bit better as a soft top. It also makes this vehicle a little bit lighter. But as you open up the top, this is why you bought a convertible sports car like this, because on this beautiful day here in Greenville, South Carolina, the sun is shining. This white leather interior just looks fantastic with this Mizano blue. I'm practically in heaven, and this is exactly why I love convertible sports cars. So yes, they're not as practical as SUVs, but damn it, I want these to stay put. Now, starting the vehicle up, here's the key fob for the Z4. It comes standard with their smart key access system as part of the premium package that my tester has. To start it up, you know how this works. BMWs put the, shift, the start button over here with a shifter. And even in comfort setting here, let me go over to sport and listen to this. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be that loud. I mean, I just drove the M340i earlier today and this is much louder, which doesn't surprise me. This is a sports car. Now, looking at the rest of this cabin, I will criticize BMW for using the same design in all of their more recent models. It's just the same overall look with the dash, with the dash vents, the way the iDrive controller looks, the way the iDrive screen looks, the way the 12 inch display here for the live cockpit professional looks. It's a nice designed interior, but I would like to see BMW do a, something a little bit different. Now, that being said, if you guys are gonna compare this to the Supra, because that's the elephant in the room here, they share a platform, the BMW Z4 gets a better interior. It's got the newer iDrive 7.0, it's got the gesture controls, it has the wireless CarPlay, still no Android Auto, unfortunately. This is again a touchscreen. I'm not gonna go too much into this because you guys have seen my other videos on BMW products, so feel free to uh, watch some of those videos. I'll include a link in the description below. The screen here is larger, it's 10.25 inches. That's also a 12 inch display. The materials here on the dash and on the door panels, you can see it's got the Sensatec dash where it's got the genuine stitching, the real leather. I love this white interior in this car. It's just really fantastic. The seats are heated three, three ways, but if you guys are looking for cooled seats, frustratingly, BMW doesn't offer cooled seats on this car, not even at its an option here in North America. On a convertible like this, they should really consider offering uh, the cooled seat option. Now looking at the rest of the center stack here, you can see BMW is kind of traditional in the sense that you have hard buttons here for the climate control. I like this little help helper screen here that shows where your temperature is set. You have a volume knob over here. You have your presets. You have a, a track a forward and track seek button over here, although I would have preferred just a knob. This particular one here also has a wireless phone charger, which is nice. You have a USB port down here. And then over here, you can see the traditional iDrive controller. You have a parking brake over here, which is electronic. It's next to the convertible top operation switch, which I don't think they should be next to each other looking very similarly. I imagine some of you may accidentally push this down or pull this up instead of the actual parking brake. Your drive mode selector, of course, is over here. Um, your shifter, this controls the eight-speed automatic. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see my tester does have a backup camera with sensors. It's the typical BMW good quality backup camera. I don't believe they offer a 360 camera, which in this, I mean, just put the damn roof down and just look over your shoulder. You don't really need the, the 360 camera. The one fault that I'm gonna talk about with the interior of this car is where the cup holders are. You're probably wondering where the heck are the cup holders? Well, there's a nice little padded armrest over here. You gotta open this up and there's the cup holders. Why would BMW hide them underneath the center console? I mean, if I wanted to put a drink there, I'm gonna have to basically leave this side down and the passenger here is shafted and they won't be able to have an armrest here. So I imagine it was just constraints with the design, which is probably why BMW had to do that. The glove compartment here you can see is pretty small, but it's damped, it's lined with felt. There's a little bit of a netting area over there where you could put stuff um, like a water bottle. And then behind me, there is a little bit of storage over here. You can see there's a little bit of a shelf right here where you could put stuff. And then there's also a little storage cubby over there that's kind of hidden, um, which is nice, but it doesn't actually lock. It would have been nice if that was locking storage. So overall at five foot seven, I'm very comfortable in this car. It feels a lot more spacious than something like a Mazda Miata. It's very comparable to a Porsche Boxster, but just keep in mind, if you guys are over six feet, you might find this a little bit cramped, but the view out of here is nice. And honestly, all your worries go away when the top goes down. So when you buy a convertible sports car, you really wanna know what's going on underneath the hood. And BMW is very good in this specific area. This particular one here is the hottest version of the Z4 you can buy. It's the M40i, which means you get a three liter turbocharged straight six cylinder engine. It's their B58 engine family. And in the Z4, it makes 382 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. Now, in case you guys didn't know, this is sharing a platform with the all new Toyota Supra, but the BMW has 50 more horsepower 
than the Toyota. So that's a nice, healthy bump. Unfortunately, if you're looking for a manual transmission, it is not available on the Z4. All you get is an eight-speed ZF automatic. If you guys think this is too much power, there is a 30i version with S-Drive, so it's rear drive. You can only get this in rear drive that has a two-liter four-cylinder with 255 horsepower. But come on, you really want to get the turbocharged straight six. Now, BMW says you should get to 60 in about 3.9 seconds, which is incredible performance for something like this. Remember, the Z4, the new one, is going to compete with something like a Porsche Boxster or a Porsche Cayman if you guys are looking at the Toyota. Toyota Supra. Now, as this one sits, it weighs around 3,400 pounds, uh, which is a little bit heavier than the Supra because this is a convertible. And fuel economy, in case you're wondering, is rated at a not so bad 24 in the city, 31 on the highway. Please be sure to put premium gas in it. So ever since I drove the all-new Toyota Supra earlier this year, I have been very excited to drive the sister vehicle, the Z4, because I like the Supra, but I, I'm more of a convertible guy. So this car being the same platform, this is the M40i version. I briefly drove the four-cylinder. I wasn't too pleased with it it sounded okay but really for you know the extra money i would go for the six now keep in mind this car is about 15 grand more than a supra so it's a bmw it's a convertible it's kind of you know a, a reasonable upcharge <laughs> yes <laughs> Yes, the truck decides to go. It's good. That's fine. It's good. Let's just do a little launch thingy here. Launch, launch. So with this engine, BMW says you're gonna get to 60 in 3.9 seconds. Oh God, that sounds really good. It feels about every bit is right. This is one seriously fast car. And unlike the old Z4, which felt more like a GT car, this one still has the feeling of a GT car, but it definitely feels more like a serious sports car. The steering in this vehicle is much better than that new M340i that I just drove. It is a little bit quicker ratio. It gives me a little bit more feel and heft to it. And I just really like the way this car feels in general, the way the exhaust system just keeps making those Burbly farty noises is just so intoxicating. What an, an amazing sound. This engine is the best part of this car. <laughs> and the, what I love about this car as well is the balance. I mean, this has a nearly perfect 50-50 weight distribution. You put your foot down, even with the traction control on, the back end likes to step out a little bit, but doesn't step out in a way that really will scare you. Now, I wanna try the launch control one more time in this car. To do it, it's pretty simple. Just turn the traction control off, floor the brake and hit the accelerator. <laughs> now it struggled to put the power down there a little bit, but it wasn't really in a scary manner. It's just a very comical manner. But the noise of this car, I can't get over how good it sounds with the top down, with the constant burbles and the crackles. The ride quality isn't even all that bad. I have it in its Sport Plus setting now. This has the adaptive M dampers and it actually still rides relatively well. You can make it a little bit softer, of course, if you put it into a comfort setting, but why would you do that? You just want to hear the noise this engine makes all the time. I mean, if BMW decides to do a full-on M version of this car, they have my blessing. This is such, oh. <laughs> just listen to the way this thing pulls. It just pulls for days. It keeps revving all the way up to nearly 7,000 RPM. And I don't miss the manual transmission because you have this really smooth, responsive, snappy eight-speed automatic. It's got these really great paddle shifters. It even has a manual shift mode here, if you'd like. Um, when you activate the manual mode, Oh. <laughs> now it's not Jaguar F-Type, you know, insane, but sometimes I think that the F-Type is a little bit too noisy, a little bit too obnoxious. This is just has the right amount of bark to it. Um, and it sounds way better than uh, a Boxster or Cayman. I will go on record and say that this engine is better than the flat four that's in my Cayman GTS. So shame on you, Porsche, for getting rid of two cylinders. And this feels not quite as fast as the Cayman, but it doesn't really matter because you have the visceral sounds, you have the wind in your hair, and it just it's gonna sound better than any four-cylinder engine when you have a smooth six-cylinder like this. 
Now, in terms of the visibility, uh, it actually is really easy to see out of this car. You do have to get used to the long nose, obviously, with that six cylinder. Uh, my tester has some of the driver assistance stuff, but BMW doesn't offer their full you know, traffic jam assistance on this car, which is acceptable because it's a sports car. You're not going to be necessarily daily driving this thing you know, to and from work all the time, especially when it's bad weather. You're going to be driving it on beautiful days like this where the weather is beautiful. It's mid 60 degrees. The sun is shining. You have an amazing road, very little traffic. This is why sports cars never need to die. SUVs are more practical, I get it. But this is what you want to drive on a nice day. Forget about practicality. Don't bother bringing all the crap that you've got. Just bring one small bag, take a weekend trip, and just enjoy the drive. Yes. I'm obsessed with this car. <laughs> I absolutely love this car. <laughs> I would buy this over a, a Boxster, absolutely. And park this like you can do it. Over here? This is an entrance. Okay, I'll turn maybe, it Maybe it was over there. Oh, over here. Yeah, maybe try God, it's so good. It sounds so it good. Sound right, oh. It's real too. Oh my God, yes. Love this car. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> So when the Z4 first came out, enthusiasts kind of associated it as a hairdresser's car, the first generation, simply because it was too small in the beginning, it didn't offer enough power. And then the second generation was a little bit bigger, but it also got a little bit too luxurious, a little bit too expensive. Now, after spending the day driving this all new third generation Z4, I'm happy to report that BMW has really nailed the formula here for a GT car and a sports car. Thanks to, I wanna say the help of Toyota because the Supra handles and rides really well. The Z4 basically just takes that and gives you the top down motoring experience. It has an amazing engine. That's the best part about this car. It's got a really quick, sharp steering. It's got a great suspension setup, which offers a really great ride quality, really neutral flat handling, a really nice balanced feel from that rear drive dynamic. And really there's very few criticisms I have about this car. I mean, obviously it's a car that is your weekend toy. You can't really drive this daily because of the small trunk and the lack of space on the inside. But I do think it's a very beautiful car, especially in the M40i in this Mizano blue exterior color with the white leather. And really, if you guys have the money to have one of these in your garage, the Z4 represents one of the most intriguing options you can buy today, especially when you compare it to a Porsche 718 Boxster because the Z4's price is really the best aspect of this new Roadster. It starts at just under $50,000, $49,000 for the four-cylinder version. Of course, if you guys are an enthusiast, you're probably going to want the six-cylinder, and that's going to cost you about $14,000 more. At a starting price of $63,000 for this particular one, it is expensive. It's about 15 grand more expensive than a Toyota Supra, but I'd argue that with the convertible aspect, the fact that this is a BMW, you're going to be going to a BMW dealership instead of a Toyota dealership, it is a decent value because a comparable Boxster is going to cost you about $10,000 more. Now, my tester with the executive package, with the premium package, with the color, with the upgraded wheels and tires, the upgraded infotainment system, this one stickers for a tick over $70,000, which makes it one of the more expensive options. Keep in mind, if you guys get a specific color, like they offer a flat gray, that's like $4,000 extra. You can push this car up to be about seventy-five grand. Go easy on the options, and I think for sixty-five. dollars you know, just under 70 grand. It's a great deal if you guys have room in your garage and your wallet for a new convertible sports car. With all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2020 BMW Z4 M40i. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.